Hello, welcome to the Farmers Day edition of Business Live. This is where we update you on current developments in business circles, both local and on the international front. In today's edition, governments to issue country's first 10-year bond to possibly raise 200 million CDs. And peasant farmers renew their call for a review of a plant breeders bill while food prices go down in recent weeks. And we explore with some farmers in Kintampo where the Farmers' Day ceremony was held earlier today. Also, the Farmers' Day edition of the Special Friday feature looks at a new local technology that seeks to address post-habit losses, a major phenomenon uh, affecting agri productivity in the country. You can stay interactive with us here on Twitter at JoyBusinessGH and on Facebook at JoyBusiness. For more, you can also log on to myjoyonline.com forward slash business. I am Komla Dum. So details now. Live today is brought to you by GCB Bank. So our very first story, governments will from next week begin the process of issuing the country's first 10-year uh, CD bond. This will be the first time the state is trying to raise funds over such a period. But at what price and how will this impact government's rising expenditure and cost of borrowing? George Raffi has more. The government is hoping to raise the funds through three institutions. That is Finance House, SES, Barclays and Stambeck Bank. These firms are expected to engage investors to ensure they are able to raise the targeted amount and at a favorable cost. Even though government is silent on the expected amount to be raised, the bond and treasury bill calendar issued earlier this year shows that the state is planning to raise some 200 million Ghana cities. It is expected to settle on the rate at which it raises the funds, possibly next week. But looking at the about 17 to 18 percent interest paid on the last seven-year bond, industry watchers are the view that the state could get a lower rate than this. Government had in the past complained about the time taken to pay back funds borrowed. Therefore, going this way could help the state borrow long-term funds for infrastructure projects in order to free up the short-term space for private firms. However, some are worried about the impact of this bond issuance on the rising public debt and expenditure. Government is planning to raise some 60 billion Ghana cities through bond and treasury bills this year. The public debt has also hit 110 billion Ghana cities as of July this year. Now, revenue from crude exports expected to decline further as tallow reduces production at Jubilee oil fields. Revenue from crude exports is expected to decline. Uh, and the Jubilee oil field says that uh, it will reduce that production to the oil field. In the following business desk reports, we have more for you. The action has been influenced by work being done on a component on the Jubilee FPSO used in the extraction of crude from the seabed. Talo earlier this week announced that it is reducing the volume of gas it exports to the Atuabo gas processing plant for three weeks starting November 1. Joy Business understands that the move would also result in crude from the Jubilee field reduced significantly, a development that could affect revenues gleaned from oil exports for the fourth quarter of this year, taxes from the resource, and royalty payments. Latest figures covering crude revenues for the third quarter showed a significant dip. The numbers reveal a $5 million reduction from a little over $24 million derived during the second quarter of 2016. The situation, if not addressed, could badly affect government's revenue. Already, end-of-July fiscal numbers reveal that 
revenues for the state has been affected. Talu has also indicated that it would shut down the Jubilee FPSO again next year for three months. That's between February and July 2017. That was a business desk report. Now to some farmers' day stories where peasant farmers are making a fresh case for Parliament to suspend passage of the Plant Breeders Bill, which seeks to legalize production of genetically modified crops. The Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana is making the demand of policymakers as the country marks National Farmers' Day. There is more in the following report. Seven cities, we have the local one and we have the foreign one. But the local one is seven cities, the foreign one too, is different prices. We have nine cities, 13 cities, 12 cities, and 15 cities. We are always losing the kurua. If it is 20 kurua or 20 bulls or 30. The kurua, can I see one? The bull. This one. Okay, this is what they call the kurua. Okay. Oh, the bull. This one to the konko. Of uh, teen of tomato, we we have one seed. Say say who are the prices of more fish product? The prices vary due to the rains. These herons you see can cost 40 to 30 cities and then 10 cities. We, however, sometimes buy it from traders at the cost of 500 Ghana cities, but for now it has reduced to 2.5. Even though we sometimes run at a loss, especially during the festive season, business is good somehow. 100. The tomatoes you see here are spoiled. These are some of the challenges we face here. The sellers actually mix the unripe ones with the ripe ones. They put the ripe ones on top, leaving the unripe ones under. Sometimes we run at loss. These tomatoes you see here are spoiled, and I don't even know what to do with them. I either wait to give it out freely or leave it to rot. Sometimes they sell it to us at the cost of 200 Ghana CDs. <laughs> I am happy. Due to the frequent rains, tubers of yam that we sell are now affordable. Previously, three tubers of yam cost 30 Ghana cities, but now it has gone down drastically to 10 Ghana cities. And with this, lots of people come to buy. Initially, we used to buy from the middlemen from Kentampo at 700 Ghana cities, but now we buy them at 500 Ghana cities. Kates of the Plants Breeders Bill believe it would boost agric productivity in the country. Several civil society groups like Food Sovereignty Ghana have however kicked against it, arguing it would protect only the interests of scientists and corporations at the expense of smallholder farmers. The program's officer of the Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana, Charles Nyaba, says this highlights the need for policymakers to take a second look at the law in the interest of the Ghanaian smallholder farmer. We want them to come out with a law that considers the interests of the Ghanaian farmer. The current law, the Plan Builders Bill, just like Uncle Ben said, is protecting the interests of corporations, foreign corporations. It's not even if it's Ghanaian corporations, we don't have a problem. Foreign corporations like Monsanto's, Dupont, who are based in US, South Africa, and producing seeds. So we want any law that they will come out with, it should be considering the interests of the Ghanaian seed producer and smallholder farmer. The national coordinator of the Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana, Victoria Adongo, also explains they only want the bill revised to prioritize the interest of the smallholder farmers through consultation. Let me emphasize once more that we are not against the whole bill. We are against the clauses that we think are inimical to smallholder farmers. So what we are saying here is that the government, parliament, and political parties should refrain from passing legislation which discriminate against farmer seed rice as a choice of seed, access to and control and ownership of seeds, and also to ensure active, uh, active involvement in legislative decision-making at all levels. 
farmers' participation in legislative decision making. They should therefore commit to withdrawing or reviewing the Plant Builders Bill in its current form and also commit not to enter into any agreement with direct or indirect negative effects on smallholder producers. The Plants Builders Bill is to, among other things, ensure a genetic diversity of food crops as part of attempts to guarantee food security in the country. The earlier insights there were some market women at the Kintampo market in the Bonahafa region who have been sharing uh, their experiences as to why prices of food crops have reduced due to the improvements in rainfall patterns there. And still on some farm stories, post-harvest losses remain a major concern adversely affecting agri productivity in the country. The lack of proper storage facilities cause farmers to lose about 30% of their harvest every year. This is, however, now expected to change with the introduction of a new local drying technology called the Solar Biomass Hybrid Dryer. My colleague Mahmoud Mohamed Nuruddin has the rest of the story on the Farmers' Day edition of Special Friday Feature. According to the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, Ghana loses $400 million annually through post-harvest losses. Ironically, 30% of all harvested grain is lost with the attendant threat to food security. A report from CSIR also indicates Ghana's food imports bill hit $1.5 billion last year. 24-year-old Stephen Jaggery is a farmer at Ejura in the Ashanti region. During harvesting, we don't know how to keep our food for long periods so that we can sell them for good price. So we find it difficult any time, day in and day in and day out, to keep it. Maybe sometimes we may not want to sell it at a price that in which we do sell. But because of where to keep that product is a problem. This is how many farmers store their grains in the open. It appears, however, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Joseph Opon Akowa is at the Agriculture Engineering Department at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. He has introduced a solar biomass hybrid dryer that will ensure farmers reduce their post-harvest losses. The drying component more or less utilizes both the sun energy as well as biomass. And so when we go behind the dryer, you will see the biomass component. So when the sun is on drying the major season, I mean, you don't expect the rains to fall continuously. There may be some intermittent sunshine. You can, as you are interviewing me, first feel the warmth inside here compared to outside. And so the idea is when the sun comes on, you can still be doing your drying. But then when it should be raining or we are in a cloudy situation or at night, we switch on to the biomass where you burn the corn cobs that basically have you know generated from the shelling of the maize and then you can burn to you know uh, more or less generate additional heat which you can use to augment more or less the heat required for drying of the dryer is designed in such a way that the moisture from the grain easily evaporates uh, the design in terms of uh, considerations that were put into the the, the, the the construction or the design of this facility is to dry maize for about eight hours so we anticipate that during the minor season, when we are particularly trapping the heat for drying, the idea is that you should be able to finish drying by eight hours. But in the major season like this, where we have you know, intermittent sort of you know, sunshine, you probably could dry between eight to 10 hours, or maximum, should I say, 12 hours. Evans Insia has also introduced silos for the same purpose. So we blow cold air into it, and the cold air runs through the stored grain and then pushes the hot air through the vent up there and then it comes. You know this uh, storage tank for water and we try to convert it into green storage and that is what I have done here. Maybe it's an innovation, it hasn't been done anywhere. The construction process of the two different solar dryers can increase local economic activity and generate employment. That was the Farmers' Day edition of a special Friday feature here on Business Live. Now to some more stories, access to loans in recent years has been a major challenge for SME expansion. SMEs are now being encouraged to adopt debt financing approach to grow their businesses. There's more in the following report. For startups and small and medium enterprises, an injection of capital sometimes means they have to give up equity in their business and divide up their profits. In these cases, debt financing might be a good alternative, 
but a few attempt this approach. Speaking to Love Business at the launch of the 2016 SME Ghana Awards in Kumasi, Chief Executive Officer of the National Medium Term Private Sector Development Strategy, Joe Taki, noted that cultural challenges prevent many from this financing approach. Most uh, business owners or the entrepreneurs uh, like to own 100% of their businesses because they, they find pride in saying that I have built a business all by myself and I own it all by myself. I mean, the simplest uh, the basics is also to, to say that myself and my wife or myself and my children own this business, you see. But sometimes it gets to a point that um, you can own it 100%, but as I said, 100% of zero, it's zero, you see. So if you were to own even 60% of the business and 40% is owned by outsiders, they help you first of all to, to they bring new ideas, they, they bring in the, the resources, they, they help you in decision making to make quality decisions and every investor is anxious about their growth and, and looking forward to the dividends. So, so obviously this is the way to go. The commercial launch of the annual SME Ghana Awards began with a workshop on business financing for more than 200 SMEs. Richard Noga, event director at Imagine 8 Company Limited, organizers of the awards, explained SMEs are unable to attract requisite investors due to inappropriate financial management. If you look at the challenges SMEs have, it is not necessarily the fact that there are, there are no um, financiers to give the money. The money is available. As I speak with you now, there are organizations that have money sitting down. But the criteria for you to actually be able to tap into that, they don't meet it. And so we would have such sessions to get them to know exactly what they need to put in place to get their businesses to attract such monies. 2015 winners of the awards were presented via plaque and certificates at the event at the launch of the awards. All right, you're still watching Business Live. We take a quick break, return with more stories. Stay on. Business Live today was brought to you by GCB Bank. You're welcome back to Business Live. We can now uh, get onto the telephone line and speak to Betha, who will give us some updates on the stock markets. Hello, Betha, if you can hear me. Uh, it's close of week. Uh, how have the stocks been faring on the market? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Kamala, for having me today on your show. Uh, before I even talk about what happened today on the stock market, let me just take our listeners and our viewers through what happened this week in particular. The market has been very, very positive in terms of the equities that traded right from the beginning. That Monday, which was the last day of the month, um, to today, we had averagely more than 200, 300,000 shares trading on the stock market on daily basis. Now, um, if you look at the, the end of the month, the major indices closed at negative 13.38%. But within the week, though we had more equities trading on daily basis, uh, some major uh, large market cap equities, such as Family Chartered Bank and ETI, which lost on the second day of this month, caused the major indices to shift further into the negative region. So as a second, we saw the composite index and the financial stock index go down by 14.77 points and 21.19 points respectively to close a negative 14.12% and negative 16.31%. Right. And Standard Chartered Bank lost a lot to close at 13.97% uh, from 14 Ghana cities per share. Now, ETI also lost two percent to close at 13 percent per share, and that is why we saw that major or that drastic step on the major indices on the 2nd of November, that was on Tuesday on the market. Now, coming down to today, on the Thursday, Wednesday, um, equities traded, uh, like we had more equities trading on the market, but we still saw some large market e e equities, large market stock equities going down on their previous share prices. And then Standard Chartered Bank continues to lose. And this time, it went down to 13.94 Ghana cities per share. EcoBank also lost one set to a place of 6.84 uh, Ghana cities, and then Social Stadium now also went down by, zero, uh, by a pressure to close of 69 pesos. And if you look at these equities that traded this week, you can say that in a way, their financials, their third quarter financials that have been released, are having some influence 
in the share pricing of these equities in the market, and it's actually driving investors' attention either to sell, to hold, or to buy these equities. And especially the general, the French bank is one equity that uh, mm. will advise investors to hold on uh, for now for long-term benefit. Because uh, you look at their interest expense, it's due by 30.90% um, to close a 45 million, over 45 million Ghana cities, though their revenue grew and all that. But if you look at this expense that the bank is incurring, it might happen that we see some further dip, dips in the share price of Societe General on the stock market. So the whole equity for long term benefit. Now, coming down to today on the market, we had a lot of equities trading, and we had 239,000 shares trading at 104,106 Ghana cities, 82 transactions, one of the highest that we've had, 82 transactions. And a lot of equities also moved. We had Ecobank Ghana dipping further by two pesos to close at six to be 82 pesos to share. And FML, which is a big giant, actually the only equity that is returning more than 30% to investors currently on the market. And the highest uh, return, let me put it that way, FML added a Tesla to its previous share price of 90 um, 81 pesos to close at 90 82 pesos per share. All this right, be, all right, uh, Betha, yeah. if you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. From yes, there. what's the cause of a slip for banks like Ecobank, for example? Well, it is nothing different, but they are fundamental. You know, one thing that has actually affected most of the banks is their NPL, that's the non-performing loans. When your non-performing loans are going up, it means that your bottom line or your profits are going to go down, and your capital adequacy ratio is going to also reduce. There's an inverse relationship between capital adequacy ratio and then NPL. So when NPLs are rising, capital adequacy ratio goes down. It means that your capital or your reserve or your capital, yeah, that's the funds, are actually going down in the bank. So when this happens, it actually um, puts investors in, in a, let's say, you, you don't really know what to do, but to be on the safer side, I would rather step out and move further. But I don't know what is going to happen to the bank anytime soon. This doesn't mean that the banks are going to collapse. No, it is just a period or a season where most banks are facing this NPL as a result of some debts that they have given out to the government and some other um, corporate or individual, you understand? So that is the main reason. The NPLs are rising, and that is affecting the shares of the equity. All, all, all right, Beta. Finally, uh, do we know how the currencies have fared uh, during the week? Um, this week has also been a very, um, let's say, um, volatile week for the local currency. And as a close of uh, yesterday, the CD actually gained marginally to the euro, but lost to the pound, and we didn't see any change in the dollar. But mm. uh, the goal for CD in the exam measures of ballistic year-to-date performance of the CD on the interbank market recorded a year-to-date depreciation to 1.94%. However, at the hour end, we are expecting or anticipating that the CD might close the year as well going to see to the dollar 5.04%. To the pound and then 4.43 to the euro. And if the if prices of gold should continue to fall on the world market, then we should see the CD depreciate as well. All right, thank you very much, uh, Betha Atubigashi. is a step stock analyst. Uh, with the Gold Coast Fund Management there giving us updates on uh, the activities on the stock market. We'll go for another break. We return with interview of the day. Stay on. level of cyber crime is adversely affecting the growth of electronic transactions in the country. That's uh, according to cybersecurity firm eCrime Bureau. The Bank of Ghana is encouraging electronic cash transactions over the use of physical cash towards a cashless economy agenda. But founder and principal consultant of eCrime Bureau, Albert Intribuisaku, tells Joy Business cyber crime is unduly hampering especially e-commerce activities. Increasingly, what we have picked up is 
fraud, especially uh, in the cyberspace undermining the growth of e-commerce. Uh, we've seen this across the mobile money platform, we've seen this uh, across the e-banking, uh, we've seen this across the private sector, even SMEs using emails uh, to communicate to facilitate business with partners and suppliers abroad. Ordinary Ghanaian will have to become cyber aware. It is very important. Businesses will have to adapt cyber security best practices and guidelines. We need to adapt the right technology. E Commerce stakeholders, developers, you have to adopt the best uh, development tools to make sure that we get ourselves out of this mess. But to what extent is the impact? Well, financial losses, as a, as a, as a topmost, uh, and then every sector in Ghana is losing money to fraud. We also have reputational damage. That is another key thing. If you are a financial institution, a bank, and your system is compromised through a hack, absolutely, that is going to have impact on how customers see you as a financial service provider. There is another, generally, ordinary users of the e-commerce product or service uh, feels unsafe if we allow cyber crime to go on uh, without addressing them. But as I'm saying, it's a multi-stakeholder approach, it's not just a government developing a cyber strategy or guidelines for the country, but also uh, individuals and also um, businesses who have to take some, some kind of responsibility. Okay. All right, so that's it for the Farmers Day edition of Business Live here on your Joy News channel on Multi TV. I am Komladun. For more business stories, you can log on to myjoyonline.com forward slash business. Good evening.